Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and uh, I'm tying another bone fish fly for you. This is The Usual. Uh, it was originated by a guide in the Cayman Islands, I believe. Um, really effective, slightly unusual in that it rides hooked down, but that's part of why it works the way it does. Um, well worth a place in your bone fish box. Although I'm pretty sure it also works for other species. Um, as always, there will be a materials list in the description along with a link to social media and uh, the Patreon page for Flicking Feathers. Um, where, if you wish to support me, help me cover some of the costs, that would be very appreciated. And uh, you could be entered into some future giveaways, um, but the details of them will come be coming soon. So the hook I'm using is a Gamakatsu SL11 3H. It's a size 6. Right? Tie them from 8s to 2s. And I'm running on a base of some 10 6 sort thread. Tan 6 sort thread. Sorry. Um, now the original was tied with rusty brown. Like that. Um, which gives you a slightly darker fly. See there's a slight difference in the colour there. Especially once it's wet. Uh, that time the craft for dubbing kind of lets the, the dark red shine through. Uh, but I'm tying these for somewhere with a lighter bottom, so I'm going for tan. Now, just for the weight, I'm using some extra small bead chain. Uh, you can adjust the, the weight um, as you make the fly bigger. You know, wouldn't it go much heavier on this fly of this size? Tie them in just about an eye width back from the hook eye make sure that nice and straight and secure it's fine now we can tie in the mouth parts mouth parts are just a wee bit of tan rabbit a wee clump, you don't need a huge amount. About just over half the shank length, right? that's your measure. Tie that off the back. Now, to help get you that kind of shrimpy taper profile, so bulky at the back, and narrowing towards what would be the tail end of the fly. I'm going to trim this halfway along the body. Tidy it up. And that helps you sort of even out. And then... As we tie, we'll, you'll start to see the taper develop. So next we need some craft fur. We're going to take a reasonable clump, we're going to take all of the under fur out, down left, look at this, end up with a reasonably sparse uh, bunch. And just sort of, any really long fibres, just take them away and realign them until you get a nice wee wispy bundle. This I like it to be a wee bit longer so like shank length something like that Just catch it in the length of the body Oops, there we go tie that right back until you hit the the tie in of your rabbit fur trim away the waist just behind the bead chain Then we're ready for the eyes. So just, just using burnt monofilament. I'm 
And again, to help with the taper, I'm trimming them. shorter than the length of the body. At this stage you can still adjust these. There you go. Now for a bit of security so these eyes can't pull out, what I like to do is a bit of super glue. And wrap back over it. That's that stops. All, that takes all the movement away. Tighten that up. Tidy everything up. And now you can sort of position your eyes at this end. If you want to, you can run the thread between them, but I generally don't bother. I just give them a little pull. Lift that up. And I'm happy enough with that. Now I'll come and I'll grab some of this under fur from the craft fur. It's quite important that you use craft fur. Because um, craft fur is a sinking material but it's also non-absorbent. If you use an absorbent material it can make the fly splat a bit. Which is less ideal. I'm just going to put a tiny... A tiny small ball dubbing in here now, and then I'm going to tie in my first pair of legs silicon legs must be silicon not rubber right um, this is two legs and you tie them on top of the shank you can allow them to sort of separate slightly but they've got to be on top of the shank and they must be silicon because um, you want that buoyancy right, the, the idea is that the back end of this will float up and it looks sort of like a, a wee shrimp making its last stand you know defending itself Another small bit of dubbing. Just enough to sort of separate the legs slightly. I'll tie in another pair of legs. Just put them tight and then wind over and touch and turns. Back. And if you pull your waist ends, trim them off so close, you'll get a nice neat cut. So, these legs, I just want them to be slightly shorter. Than the front two. And then the rest of the fly is just a dubbed body. You're dubbing nice and tight. And when I get to the get to the front, I'll tie in my weed guard. Just a length of twenty pound mono, hard nylon. Fold it in half, two wraps in front, pull that back, two wraps behind, pull that down, you can tighten that up. If you want, you can uh, run your thread in between, 
just to help separate them. We'll take it back there. And I'll just finish off with a wee punch a wee pinch of under for. Go through the eyes. Make sure you get that covered nice. And right up to the head. And then just Couple of whip finishes for security. And the fly is done. Just come in with a wee bit of head cement. Use whatever you like, use super glue, Sally Hansen's, whatever you prefer. Perfect. Just trim your weed guard. There you go. That's the u the usual. You can rough it up a bit if you like, but you don't really need to. Um, great wee bone fish fly. Point back end, sits hook down. Can be fished quite slowly for picky fish. So, um, hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up below, share the video etc. Tight lens guys, bye!